In this FRQ practice video, which comes from question five from the 2024 AP Bio exam, we're gonna study questions about reproductive isolating mechanisms, about gene structure and gene expression, and phylogeny and evolution. Are you ready for AP Bio Review? Here's part A of question five. Researchers study mechanisms that enable or prevent speciation. Describe a post-zygotic mechanism that prevents gene flow and thus enables speciation. Pause the video, write your answer. When you're ready to see my answer, hit play. Reproductive isolating mechanisms are structures or behaviors that prevent closely related species from interbreeding. Those can be prezygotic mechanisms that prevent mating, or if mating does occur, prevent formation of a zygote, or they can be postzygotic mechanisms where if zygote formation occurs, they prevent the zygote from developing into a healthy, fertile adult, or they otherwise prevent gene flow. Here are some possible answers for question 5a. You could have any one of the following. The first is hybrid inviability. The zygote doesn't develop into a viable organism. Hybrid sterility. The hybrid offspring are healthy, but they can't reproduce. And finally, hybrid breakdown. The hybrids are healthy and can reproduce, but the next generation is either inviable or sterile. If you look at the scoring guide, you only have to have the description. You didn't need to name these post-zygotic reproductive isolating mechanisms. Just to give you a visual for the answer that you probably chose, which was hybrid sterility. It's the one that's most familiar. Here in this diagram, you can see that a horse and a donkey can successfully reproduce to form a mule, but the mule is sterile. And in other words, that sterility prevents gene flow between horses and donkeys. Now we turn to question five, part B, which focuses on the evolution of the antifreeze glycoprotein AG gene in CODs, which are a type of fish. New genes can evolve from non-coding regions of DNA. It is not until certain regulatory elements are present in the DNA that the non-coding region becomes a new functional gene that encodes a protein. These regulatory elements include a promoter, a five prime untranslated UTR, followed by a start codon, and a three prime untranslated region, UTR, following a stop codon. This is all shown in figure one. Here's the promoter. Here's that five prime UTR. Here are the exons with some unlabeled introns in between. These are the AG repeat sequences and here's the three prime UTR. As you can see in your scoring guide, the introduction to question five part B is quite long. Here's the rest of it. Researchers study the evolution of the family of antifreeze glycoprotein AG encoding genes in Gatidaea, a family of marine fish known as cods. When present in the fish, these glycoproteins reduce the freezing temperatures in the fish. The researchers compared genomic sequences in nine cod species and one non-cod fish species, B. brosmi. They recorded the presence or absence of the elements of functional AG genes, as well as AG-like sequences that are similar to a functional gene, but have undergone mutation and do not contain all the elements required to enable protein production. That's in figure two. I wanna emphasize that I redrew figure two, and you should look at your copy of your downloaded FRQ to see the college board's information. They're the same in terms of the information, but the style is different, and I want you to get used to the style in which the College Board presents its information. Before going to the question, let's talk a little bit about how you read a phylogenetic tree like this and the accompanying table. Here we have the phylogenetic tree. This slash mark indicates in time when the five prime untranslated region was supposed to have evolved. This is showing when the AG-like repeat sequences were supposed to have evolved, and that is based on a timeline that's down here. There's a period of freezing temperatures between 10 and 15 million years ago, and then you can see how in each lineage, whether certain elements of the gene are present or absent. So like, for example, a promoter is present in all six of these species, as is the AG repeat sequences. 
but not the three prime UTR region that's present here, but it's absent here. And there's a key over here that's telling you the element is absent or the element is present. And then there's additional information and L would indicate that the functional AG genes are lost and the P indicates that they're present. Here we have the temperature in which these species are found. And here's the question. Based on the data in figure two, explain how changes to the genome enabled CODs to survive and reproduce after a period of freezing temperatures between 10 and 15 million years ago. Pause the video, answer the question, and then hit play to see my answer. The answer is that between 10 and 15 millions of years ago, a functional AG gene with a promoter AG repeat sequences, and a three prime UTR emerge. The product of this gene, in other words, the proteins that the gene codes for, enabled this species with this gene to survive and reproduce in colder waters. And you can see that here's 10 and 15 million years ago, and after that period, you have these one, two, three, four, five, six species, have these elements, but it was lost in these two over here. And these four species over here are the ones that can survive in very cold water between 1.2 and 6 degrees Celsius. If you want to crush it on this year's AP Bio exam, then you're going to have to write great responses on the FRQ portion of the exam. It's half of your score. Where can you learn how to do that? On learn-biology.com with our enhanced practice FRQs. You read a prompt, you type in your response, we give you feedback telling you about your answer's strengths and weaknesses. If you need help, you can ask for a hint. If you're really stuck, you can study a sample answer. We have dozens of practice FRQs, and this is the kind of practice and feedback that'll lead you to crush it on this year's AP Bio exam. So here's your plan. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up, use our enhanced practice FRQs to get the practice you need to succeed. Question 5C. Using the template in the space provided for your response, place an X on the phylogenetic tree to represent the origin of the functional AG gene. You have your downloaded FRQ. Go ahead and make that mark and then hit play to see whether your mark is the same as mine. Here's the answer. You want to put an X over here. And the important thing is that it's in the common ancestor of this clade of organisms that goes from here down to here. A clade is a group of organisms with a common ancestor. Your phylogenetic tree is different from the one that I drew in terms of style, though the information is the same. So make sure that you look at the scoring guide to make sure that you put the X in the right place. Question 5D. Based on figure 2, explain how genetic differences among the species in the Gadidea family determine the habitats in which they can survive. Hit pause, write your answer, hit play to see my answer. Here's the answer to 5D. Those species who have functional versions of genes that can produce the AG protein are able to live in colder temperatures than those who don't. And you can look over here at the phylogenetic tree and you can see that in all of these four species who live in the coldest waters, they have all of the gene elements and they're all functional as opposed to in these two species, which are also members of the clade, but some of those AG encoded genes are lost. They're not living in these colder waters. What you're doing now, which is studying a past FRQ, is a fabulous study strategy. But what you want to do is to get yourself ready for future FRQs, like the ones that are coming up on this year's exam. So I want to extend on some of the content that was in this question. One important idea is the idea of a clade. It wasn't mentioned in this question. I use the term. A clade is a group that includes an ancestor and all of its descendants. So these two species over here would constitute a clade, the common ancestor being right over here. This is also a clade. Here's its common ancestor. And here's another clade that would consist of these four species. All of the cod are a clade over here. 
Another important concept is an outgroup. Again, it was referred to in this question, though it wasn't explicitly named. An outgroup is a species that is not part of the clade that is used as a point of comparison. And you might remember that there was this one non-cod fish, B. brasmi, that appears in this chart over here. What's the purpose of an outgroup? It's to organize the rest of the organisms in the phylogenetic tree by serving as a reference point, a point of comparison. To take this even further, what I want to do is throw a question at you that relates to a possible point of confusion that many students have in relationship to phylogenetic trees. Here's the question. A student claims that P. virens, P. virens is over here, is more closely related to M. agelfinus, I'm making up these pronunciations, than it is to A. Glacialis over here. So here's A. glacialis, here's M. agelfinus, and here's P. virens. Evaluate the student's claim. Go ahead, give that a try, hit pause, write out an answer, and then I'll discuss what my answer is. Here's the answer. The claim is false. Based on this phylogeny, P. virens over here is equally related to both M. agelfinus and A. glacialis. How can that be? Because in a phylogenetic tree, the way you evaluate evolutionary closeness is by recency of common ancestry. And the common ancestor of P. virens and M. agelfinus is all the way back here. And it's the same common ancestor with A. glacialis. It's this over here. So P. virens is equally related to both. And in this kind of tree, which is sort of a lateral tree, the vertical position has nothing to do with evolutionary relatedness. It's all about common ancestry. And the reason for that is because a phylogenetic tree is like that kind of art form that's called a mobile. It can rotate around any of the nodes. So here's another image that drives home this point. These two phylogenetic trees are identical. And in this one, the frog is located right next to the lizard going vertically. And here the frog is right next to the gorilla, but those are both equally true. That's because the frog and the lizard, where's their common ancestor? It's all the way back here at C. The frog and the gorilla, where's their common ancestor? It's the same common ancestor over here. So frogs are equally related to gorillas as they are to lizards. The misconception is that vertical closeness on a horizontal tree indicates something, and it doesn't. It doesn't indicate evolutionary closeness. Remember that. You've done a great job studying this FRQ. Now the way to continue your practice is to do it with novel stimuli that you've never seen before and to get great feedback. And the place where you can do that is on learn-biology.com with our enhanced practice FRQs with AI feedback. So your next move for success is to go to learn-biology.com, sign up, and then watch this next video.